Today we'll take a look at the update process within LaTeX, which is one of the most powerful and unique capabilities. It's particularly useful for an agile development environment where code is changing continuously and one must remember that the architecture itself is also changing. So how does one manage the architecture which is changing along with the code that is changing in a continuous and development environment and LaTeX update is the solution uh, which allows you to do that. So let's take a look at a project that we loaded. It's uh, Ant version 141 and let's just do some refactoring on it, some architectural refactoring. So we'll expand tasks uh, and the framework We'll find tasks here and we'll move that uh, because it's part, of the, it's part of the components that sit on top of the framework. Uh, we'll look at take mail, tar, and zip. And these are part of the utilities. So let's create a parent subsystem for them. And let me call that util. So those of you who have seen my previous videos are familiar with this. Uh, and we can now exp open this and we can see it in detail. So that's those that's the refactoring or architectural changes that I'd like to do. So I'd like to take my, my utilities and put them under util. I'd like to put my tasks on top of the framework. Uh, and notice that when we look at the work list, those changes are being remembered here. Now let's assume at the same time that uh, code is changing as well. And perhaps we, during this time, while we were doing the, making these changes, we didn't really create a new package called util. Uh, but we'll take the next set of changes to the code. So we'll look at, instead of looking at the current version, we'll change it and we'll load version 151 into it and we'll apply it. And we'll, we'll let's create a report as well for this update. And we are we are doing an update. So we took the old model and applied the new the new code to that model, and it produced a report. As you can see, some number of classes were missing, and new classes were found. And we can actually go to the uh, to view the report in the browser. And if you come here, it nicely summarizes it all for you. So we can see that. Uh, these classes no longer exist in the new version. The new version is a lot bigger and therefore many of the, we have added 125 new classes. And if we go further down, then we'll see all the classes that have changed along with the exact reason uh, of what the change is. All right, so that's the first part of what update did for us. But now let's take a look at the DSM. And when you look at the DSM, it's a lot bigger now. There are many more classes. There are many more packages. And the packages were inserted at the right place. So some of these packages did not exist before, uh, but they were, they were inserted, the new packages were inserted in the right, uh, under the right parent. New classes that came in were inserted under the, the right parent as well. But notice util, which was a, which wasn't a real package. It's a subsystem that we created to describe our architecture. And it was remembered. Uh, so we have mail, tar, and zip still as part of util. Now let's take a look at this new package that came in, bzip2. Uh, and it was put under the package that is a child of. So it was under org Apache tools. And if you're familiar with my old videos, the demos, uh, then we know that bzip2 is actually part of the utilities. And so we'll drag this and move it and make it part of util. So there it is. I moved it down. So what did we do here? First, the code had changed. Uh, and second, the architecture had changed as well. Uh, and we are able to accommodate this. So we didn't have to recreate our util. Uh, we had we all those changes that we had made earlier were remembered and our architecture ch changed incrementally just as our code had changed. Let me show you one more example. Let's take a look at star and RMIC and we know this. These two are coupled together and we want 
Latix to give us a hint on how we can remove that dependency and so we say hints for removing dependency and it says move the class RMIC which happens to be in star into the package RMIC. The naming itself is a hint here. Uh, and so let's go ahead and do that move and if you look at it, if you look at RMIC, notice that that class RMIC even though it was in a, uh, even though it's not in the RMIC package, uh, it's been, we made this move. Now we'll go ahead and we'll update this once again. So let's come to do project properties. Um, let's change this from 151 to 161. Let's go ahead and apply these changes. And this time we will skip the report generation and we'll just run this. So there it is. We've just run it and now it's even bigger project and you can, those of you who might remember, you can notice all these extra dependencies which are all violations and if we had rules they would be highlighted as well. But look at RMIC in the class there. That class still remains under the RMIC package even though the name of that class by default it's, it, we haven't really moved it in the code. And so what Latix gives you is this ability to be able to incrementally change your architecture as it changes normally as well as incrementally improve it uh, as well just as your code imp imp improves incrementally as well. So there you have it. Um, Latix update which does two important things that we looked at. One it allows you to update your, uh, incrementally update your architecture and second it produces a, a report which tells you exactly how two models are different. Uh, and this is the capability that allows you to manage both in an agile environment.